In this video, we are going to learn many things about Djibouti. We'll discuss about the country's religious distribution, language distribution, cultural heritage, political environment, geographic and strategic importance, economic importance, and other relevant factors contributing to its geopolitical significance in the region. In the end, we will also learn why there are so many military bases in Djibouti. I've also put the timestamps in the description. In case you want to skip over a topic, you can do so. Without any further delay, let's begin. Can you see this portion? This looks like a horn. Hence, it is called the Horn of Africa, like how we see a horn on a rhinoceros. Here is Djibouti. In the north, there is Eritrea. In the west and south, there is Ethiopia and Somalia is in the southeast. The capital of Djibouti is Djibouti city. Both country and its capital name are the same. Now, let's understand the religious distribution of Djibouti. If you look at the population of Djibouti as of 2021, Djibouti has a population of a little over 1 million people. The majority, that is around 94% of them, are followers of Islam, and that too Sunni Islam. Even Shia followers are there, but they are minuscule. And the remaining 6% of the population belongs to several Christian denominations, like Roman Catholic, Ethiopian Orthodox, and various other Christian practices of Europe. Apart from Muslims and Christians, there are Hindu people as well. But their population is very tiny, somewhere in hundreds and thousands. The Hindu community in Djibouti is mainly composed of Indian expatriates who have settled in the country for work or business purposes. They have also established a Hindu temple which is here. Hence, it is fair to say that Djibouti somewhat has a diverse religious landscape and that can be understood by looking at its location which forms a meeting point between Africa, Asia and the Middle East. Now let's look at the language distribution. If you look at the official language that is spoken in Djibouti, Generally, French and Arabic are the official languages. Arabic is used mainly for religious and official purposes. French is used in education, government and business sectors. Apart from these two, Somali language and Afar language are also widely spoken. Somali is the mother tongue of the majority of the population and is spoken as a first language by about 60% of the people. Afar is spoken by Afar ethnic group and is the primary language in the regions of Tajura and Obok. Then there are local languages like Amharic, Oromo and Tigrinya, which are spoken by small communities of Ethiopians living in Djibouti. And then as I mentioned, Hindus also live, so naturally they would speak Hindi among themselves. And finally English. English is also becoming more prevalent in Djibouti, especially in international business and education. You will be able to understand the importance of English in this country once I cover economics and geopolitical angle. Similar to a diverse religious landscape, even linguistic diversity can be seen due to the country's geographic location, which forms a crossroad between different cultures and regions. Now let's understand a few things about Djibouti's geographic location. I will divide this section into two parts. The first part will be about its geographic location from a subject of geography, while the second part will be about its geographic location in terms of economics, international trade and geostrategic interest. So let's cover the geography and geology part. One interesting fact about Djibouti's geographic location is that it sits at the intersection of three tectonic plates, the African plate, the Arabian plate and the Somali plate. This makes it an area of active volcanic and seismic activity. In fact, Djibouti is home to several active and dormant volcanoes, as well as numerous hot springs and geysers. Another unique aspect of Djibouti's geography is its diverse landscape, which includes a combination of deserts, mountains and coastal areas. For example, Djibouti is home to the Grand Bara Desert, which is one of the largest sand deserts in the world, covering an area of over 1000 square kilometer in the southern part of Djibouti. Djibouti also has few notable mountains and highlands, including Goda Mountains. These are ranges of mountain that extends up to the northern part of the country, near the border with Eritrea. The highest peak in the range is Mount Musa Ali, which is also the highest point in Djibouti, standing at 2028 meters above sea level. Then there are Are Mountains, located in the southern part of the country, near the border with Ethiopia. Then the country's coastline is also an important geographical habitat for marine life, including whale sharks, dolphins and sea turtles. The length of Djibouti's coastline is approximately 314 kilometers. Djibouti also has a gulf called the Gulf of Tajura. The Gulf of Tajura is a deep water gulf that extends approximately 80 kilometers inland and is surrounded by highlands and mountains, including the Goda Mountains to the north and the Are Mountains to the south. 
The Gulf is an important shipping lane and provides access to the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. It is also home to a variety of marine life including whales, dolphins, sharks and sea turtles. The Gulf of Tajura is a popular tourist destination and is known for its scenic beauty and cultural significance. The country also has three lakes. They are generally small and shallow due to the country's arid climate. The most significant lake in Djibouti is Lake Asal, which is a saltwater lake located in the central western part of the country. Lake Asal is the lowest point in Africa and the third lowest point on earth with a surface area of approximately 54 square kilometers. It is also one of the saltiest bodies of water in the world with salinity levels that can reach up to 10 times that of sea water. The second lake is Lake Abe, which is located on the border with Ethiopia and is known for its dramatic rock formations and geothermal activity. And the third one is Lake Gube. It is a small inlet and not a true lake, but rather a bay or cove that is connected to the Gulf of Tajura. The area around Lake Gube is known for its geothermal activity and underwater volcanic vents, which create a unique and otherworldly landscape. Now let's quickly get to know about the climate of Djibouti. Djibouti has a hot and arid climate with temperatures that remain high throughout the year. The country is located near the equator and is also surrounded by deserts which contribute to its dry and sunny weather. The average annual temperature in Djibouti is around 30 to 35 degrees Celsius with very little variation between seasons. The hottest months are from May to September when temperatures can reach up to 45 degrees Celsius in some parts of the country. During the coolest months of the year, that is from December to February, temperatures in Djibouti may dip slightly, particularly in the highlands and mountainous regions. However, even during these months, temperatures typically remain above 20 degrees Celsius during the day and do not drop below 10 degrees Celsius at night in most parts of the country. That also means Djibouti does not receive snowfall. Now rainfall in Djibouti is generally low, which is why most of its land is covered by desert or semi-desert environments. The wettest months in Djibouti are from January to April. During this time, the country's highlands and coastal areas may receive moderate to heavy rainfall, with some areas receiving up to 250 to 300 mm, that is 10 to 12 inches of rain. The average annual rainfall is around 130 to 150 mm, that is 5 to 6 inches, but some areas may receive as little as 50 mm, that is 2 inches of rain per year. Many parts of the country experiences occasional droughts and dust storms that have significant impacts on agriculture, water resources and public health. Djibouti is home to a variety of fauna including many species of mammals, birds, reptiles and marine life. I will mention a few of them, you can pause the video and have a look at it. As I've already mentioned about the climatic condition of Djibouti, it has a hot and dry climate due to its location near the equator and its proximity to the deserts of the Arabian Peninsula. Due to such climate, vegetation is mostly found in the mountainous regions and along the coast. I will mention a few trees that are found in Djibouti. Pause the video and have a look at it. With this, we have covered the geographic landscape which includes tectonic plates, volcanoes, deserts, mountains, lakes, coastal areas, climatic conditions, temperature, fauna and flora of Djibouti. Now let's cover Djibouti's geographic location in terms of economics, international trade and geostrategic interests. As you know, Djibouti is located at the entrance to the Red Sea, which is a mandatory passage for the Suez Canal, which is one of the world's busiest shipping routes. The country's location allows ships to bypass the longer and more dangerous route around the southern tip of Africa and instead take a shorter route through the Red Sea and then Suez Canal. Plus, this is an important shipping lane connecting Europe, Asia and the Middle East. Almost 30% of all shipping in the world passes this point and is a vital choke point for the global trade of oil and goods. Ports in Djibouti play a crucial role in facilitating maritime trade and commerce, serving as a major gateway for imports and exports to the entire African continent. You can think of Djibouti ports as a gateway of Africa. The country has several ports, including the port of Djibouti, which is the largest port in the country and one of the busiest in the region. Other ports include the port of Tadjura, the port of Dorale and the port of Gube. According to the Djibouti Ports and Free Zones Authority website, Djibouti has plans for the expansion, development and construction of new container terminals, airports and free zone. Free zone projects are very crucial 
Basically, a free zone in a seaport is an area within the port's jurisdiction where goods can be imported, exported, stored and processed without having to come under customs duties and other taxes. In other words, a free zone is a designated area where businesses can operate with greater freedom and flexibility, making them attractive locations for trade and investment. So Djibouti has plans for developing many free zones that will definitely unleash the economic potential of Djibouti. I've already said this, Djibouti's strategic location has made it a critical gateway for international trade and a major transshipment hub. Now because of this, Djibouti has several foreign naval bases. The country's main naval base is the Djibouti Naval Base, which is operated by the Djiboutian Navy. Apart from that, there are several countries including France, Italy, Japan, the United States and China. Even these countries have their respective naval base in Djibouti. Italy and Japan established their naval bases in Djibouti in 2015 and 2011 respectively. France established its naval base in Djibouti in 1969, shortly after Djibouti gained its independence from France. The United States established its military base in Djibouti known as Camp Lemonier in 2003. And then China established its first overseas military base in Djibouti in 2017. As you go through the list, you will realize that Russia does not have a military base in Djibouti. Now the question is why so many rich foreign countries have their naval base in Djibouti. If you look at Djibouti, it is situated near the Gulf of Aden. This area is widely known for piracy and other security concerns and is close to conflict zones such as Somalia and Yemen. One of the main reasons why foreign countries have established naval bases in Djibouti is to protect their shipments and maritime trade routes which are crucial for the economies by providing security against Somalian pirates and other security threats in this region. Djibouti has a well-developed port and transportation infrastructure that allows foreign countries to easily transport personnel, supplies and equipment to the region. Now the second reason why foreign countries have established naval bases in Djibouti is that it will allow foreign countries to work closely with regional partners in Africa and allies like Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Israel. Now this is a diplomatic language. If I have to say this in a very plain and simple manner, you have to notice one thing. The United States does not have a naval base on the western side of Africa, which if you see is comparatively closer to the US soil. But it has a naval base on the other side of Africa, that is on the eastern side. If you see, Africa is certainly an important region in the eyes of major global powers, as it is a continent with significant natural resources and strategic geographic location. So it can be said that Western countries have strategically positioned their naval bases and military stations on the eastern side of Africa due to the potential support of their Muslim majority allies in case of conflicts or crisis. Since Islam is a major religion in Africa, in the event of an emergency, support from the Middle East could provide a key advantage for Western powers. However, on the Western side of Africa, the United States would have fewer allies to rely on in the event of a crisis and that would leave them to face challenges alone. In the Eastern side of Africa, there are conflicts going on and then there are diverse tribal ideologies. Now I want you to listen to this carefully. This presents a greater opportunity for the United States to start a proxy war without taking any responsibility. By exploiting existing differences and conflicts, the United States could potentially create more instability in the region to further its own interests. Now I will also give you a third reason. If you look at the foreign countries that have naval bases in Djibouti, except for China, all of them are part of G7 and they are allies of the United States. Let's assume tomorrow if Western countries want to leverage their presence in Djibouti. After all, establishing naval bases in Djibouti by Western countries definitely involves a significant financial investment. So naturally there has to be some significant benefit to justify the expense, right? So in such a case, tomorrow if Western countries decide to leverage their presence in Djibouti, they could potentially block important trade routes in this region with the help of force and that would have a major impact on the economies of Asian countries. In such a scenario, the only viable alternative route would be through the Pacific, where the United States holds significant influence. So these are the important reasons why so many rich foreign countries have their naval base in Djibouti. Now India is aware of this. That is why India along with Iran and Russia have constructed the International North-South Transport Corridor INSTC. 
The International North-South Transport Corridor is designed to provide a shorter and more cost-effective trade route between Russia, Iran and India by skipping the traditional sea route that passes through the Suez Canal. I have a video on INSTC, I will put the link to that video in the top right corner. If you want to know more, watch that video. In the end, let me also tell you a few things about the politics in Djibouti. Djibouti is a one-party dominant state, wherein the People's Rally for Progress RPP, has been the ruling party since independence in 1977. The current president, Ismail Omar Gwele, is both head of the state and the head of the government of Djibouti and the commander-in-chief of the Djibouti Armed Forces. He has been in power since 1999, succeeding his uncle, who had been in power since independence. So in short, we can say that Djibouti's political system can also be called authoritarian. If there is no opposition political party, then you cannot call it a democratic country, right? Although Djibouti is governed by a single political party, it has managed to maintain stability and relatively low levels of conflict compared to other nearby countries. Furthermore, it is worth noting that the Western countries which have established their bases in Djibouti are themselves democratic nations. Therefore, how do they justify supporting a country with a one-party system? This is where you have to understand that Western countries justify their support for Djibouti by the fact that they can establish their naval bases there, which extends their interest in the region. Therefore, as long as their interests are being served, they are not concerned about the political environment of Djibouti. Even Djibouti does not impose any limitations on the nature or objectives of military operations that are conducted from the bases by these Western nations. Because the rent paid by these countries for the military land also plays a significant role in Djibouti's primary source of income. On top of it, Djibouti is also getting free security from these military bases. And then Djibouti earns a significant amount of money from ships passing through the country. So giving land to these foreign countries provides significant economic benefits. So it's a two-way street. But at the same time, if tomorrow Western countries want to start a proxy war, they wouldn't hesitate either. This is the reason why China has also decided to set up its own base in Djibouti. And now other countries such as Russia, Saudi Arabia and India have also shown interest in building a military base in Djibouti. There is an English phrase, if you're not on the table, then you will be on the menu. It means that if you're not involved in the decision making process or you don't have a say in what is happening, then you will become a victim or a target of those who are making the decisions. Currently, the Western countries have more military bases in Djibouti. In order to balance the power and prevent any single country or group from dominating the region, other influential countries must establish their bases. So this is everything you have to know about Djibouti. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.